Hi and welcome to the 8th ARCHICAD video tutorial for beginners. In this video we are going to be talking about the slab tool. You can find your slab tool right here in your toolbox under the design tab. And what I like to do for my slabs in my projects is actually create different stories between the main stories of my projects. So let's say for this project we have ground floor first story and second story. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here on stories, I'm going to click on story settings and underneath each story I'm going to insert another story. So I usually like to have these written out in caps lock, ground floor and underneath I'm going to have below ground floor and over here you can set the elevation for each story and height to the next story. So these stories that I have between the main stories are not going to be as high as the rest of the main stories. So for this I'm going to have it be let's say half a meter, so 0 0.5 meters. So for the first story I'm going to again write in caps lock first story and below I'm going to say below first and then again second story and then below I'm gonna say below second and then the story called below first I'm gonna have it be 25 centimeters and the one below the second again 25 centimeters I'm gonna click OK and now I can see that between the main stories which I wrote out in caps lock I have my intermediary stories I like to have these between my main stories because I like to place on these stories the stuff that I don't want to have visible on the main stories so I'm gonna go to the ground floor right now and this is how our ground floor looks from the previous videos and now I'm gonna make sure that my trace and reference is still activated and I'm gonna go on the below ground floor story and with my slab tool selected I can draw my slabs. I'm gonna actually hit Ctrl and Z so that I can tell you a little bit about how you can draw out your slabs. So you have three different geometry methods. You have the one you, where you draw a polygon. So if I have this one selected, I can just go around and draw a random shape. The next geometry method is the rectangular, so you do two clicks and you have a rectangle. And the third option is the rotate rectangle, so you draw one side of the rectangle and then you pull it out to have it be as wide as you want. Now that we know how to draw our slabs, we're going to look at how we can modify them. If you want to modify a slab that you created and then you click either on the corners or on the sidelines of the slab and then you have this pet palette and with the first one, they're pretty self-explanatory, with the first one you just pull out a point, with the second one you do a curve in your uh, slab side Another option is this one, which I don't really use. You just do a tangent, I'm guessing, to the um, curve that you want to put on your slab. Another thing that you can do on these curved sides is you can actually insert another point on the curved side because if you would want to do something else with it, like a point, it automatically becomes straight. So first you have to add a point on your curve and then you can modify this again. Another thing that you can do is to just offset one edge. So you put it, pull it in or out. Another thing that you can do is you can offset all edges. So outward or inward. Inward in this case it doesn't work because of this point here. If you modify this, now we can go inward up to a point until these don't intersect in a weird way. So if we modify this again we can again go inward. 
another thing that you can do is actually add to your slab so let's say you have this slab and you want to add a rectangle here I'm gonna keep my rotate rectangle geometry method selected I'm gonna do a line here and add a rectangle this direction next thing you can do is obviously subtract and you can actually subtract without actually going there and selecting it you can just start drawing on it and that will subtract from your slab another thing that you can do is modify the side angles but I'm gonna get to that in a minute when we're going in our 3d view and you can obviously move it but you can do that just by using your shortcut on your keyboard control and D you can rotate it mirror it and do all these other things that you can also do by using your shortcuts on your keyboard another thing is I'm gonna actually delete this one I'm gonna delete all of them actually so these two as well and I'm gonna select this first geometry method which is to draw a polygon and I'm gonna actually trace what I have on the ground floor so I'm gonna do clicks on the corners of my walls on the ground floor and now if I draw a marquee and hit F5 I can see that in my 3D view I have the slab that we just created uh, if we want to move it upward so it's right below the first floor I'm gonna hit Ctrl and D select one point and move it upward I'm actually just gonna select the slab and hit F5 again so it's the only thing visible on the screen and as you can see it has two different core elements and that is because we have the structure type selected to be composite so if I select my slab and change the structure type to your basic structure type it's pretty self-explanatory what happens it's just a basic slab it doesn't have different core elements if I select this composite type then it has different core elements and you can change the different composite types from here so you can have either a generic slab or roof, generic roof shell you can have concrete floor with parquet you have the main structural element you have some uh, stucco underneath and then the different elements for the parquet you can actually create your own composite structures or you can actually modify these ones I have a video on that I'll link it either on the corner of your screen or in the description down below you can check that out to see how you can actually modify the different composite elements the main difference between the basic structure type or the composite structure type is that you cannot change the thickness of a slab if it's a composite type so if I let's say change this to a basic structure type I can see that over here I can actually change the thickness of my slab so if I say minus 0.5 the slab becomes thicker if I have my composite structure type it automatically changes uh, according to whatever composite you have selected and again if I change the composite all of these layers change for composites you can actually change where the reference line is so if we have this one selected we can see that the reference line is right at the top of our slab if we can change it to have it be on the bottom so all of the layers moved upward and these little cutouts here are because of the other structural elements that are actually in intersecting with our slab and these are not structural elements so what's above the core of the slab and that's why they are actually cutouts if you press F5 we can see that the walls actually intersect with our slab and that's why we can see those cutouts in uh, if we just have the slab selected so again I selected the slab and pressed F5 and I showed you already how you can change the reference line right here if you want to change more settings for your slab all you need to do is you have to select it and you are gonna click on Ctrl and T or go right here and click on this button you go into settings and you can 
um, change different things here as well you can change the home story let's say you want to have it below the first floor you can change it here but I'm gonna leave it to below ground floor you can actually modify here where you want this lab to be visible so let's say you have it you want to have it visible on your home story so below ground floor and also on the uh, one story above it I'm gonna change this I'm gonna click OK and now if I go in my ground floor I can actually see the slab and select it well, I can't really see it because it's right below the walls but now you can see this is the slab that's visible also on the ground floor again I'm gonna select my slab and go to settings and this is uh, where you can actually change a few more things you can actually change the pen for the outlines right here you just select a different one hit OK and the outlines are changed it is now red instead of the blue that was before I'm gonna remove the marquee I'm gonna go here under document and select my section tool and I'm just gonna do a point here one point here and face this direction I'm gonna select my section and I'm gonna right click open with current view settings and now we can see the slab in our section this is how our slab looks like in a section right now I'm gonna right click and uh, make sure we can see the true line weight of our elements and I'm gonna select my slab right now you can see that there's different um, foreground and background pens for our slab I'm gonna select my slab I'm gonna go to settings and here under cut surfaces I'm gonna override cut fill pens both of them and automatically this turned the light blue again I'm just gonna do orange and for the background I'm gonna do light gray I'm gonna click OK and you can see the foreground pen for all of the surfaces became orange and the background become became gray in order to change the outline for each um, composite layer you're gonna go to let, let me first see what type of composite this is it is the flat roof which is not <laughs> what this is but nevertheless I'm gonna go to options element attributes composites I'm gonna select the flat roof composite and here is where you can change the outlines of each layer I'm gonna do yellow for all of the non-structural elements and then for the structural ones we're gonna do red just so you can really see the difference with everything I'm gonna click OK and you can see with yellow the non-structural ones but unfortunately the red pen that I selected is very thin I think it has a zero thickness so that's why it's not very visible but I think you guys get the point you can change the pens and the appearance of your um, slab in section either by go by selecting it and going to settings and changing the different elements here and by going to options element attributes composites I'm gonna go to my below ground floor plan I'm gonna select my slab and I'm gonna press F5 I'm actually gonna select it and then move it a little bit downwards so it's not intersected with the walls on the ground floor and in order to change the surface of the slab you have to select it and you can either have this surfaces of the slab to be by building materials or you could activate all of these and you can just select whatever surface you want for the lower face for the upper face and for the side face of the slab another thing you can change is the side angle like I said previously in this video what I'm gonna do is actually do a marquee and then I'm gonna press F5 and if we select our slab and put it right below this wall and then if we look up here we can have the side angle be perfectly vertical so at 90 degrees or we could have it as a custom angle if we do 45 it's gonna go 45 degrees 
inward and then if we want to have it on the outside we could have 135 degrees going outward so that's an interesting feature that you could maybe find useful in your projects. These are the main things that I wanted to talk about regarding this lab tool. I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye!